you've now finally seen the general form of the ideal gas equation. By essentially setting the gas constant R equals to R, we can take the four state variables rearranged for an ideal gas at some state. We could change any one, two, three of those four state variables and still calculate the change that would occur to the last state variable. That's what the general form is going to do for us. And that's what this question is about. A 1.00 milliliter sample of nitrogen gas at 36.2 degrees Celsius. Going to need to change that to Kelvin. And 2.14 bar is heated to 37.8 degrees Celsius. Again, Kelvin. And the pressure is changed to 1.02 bar. What volume does the gas occupy at this final temperature and pressure? Well. Let's read a few things into this and let's just organize some data. So, the key somewhat is that we are heating. There's a before and an after. That before, let's call it initial this time, has a volume of 1.00 milliliters. And that's at a temperature of 36.2 degrees Celsius, but of course we need to convert that to Kelvin by adding 298.15, sorry, not 298, that's actually 25 degrees Celsius in Kelvin, we need to add 273.15. And so that's going to get us to what, 309.3 Kelvin for our temperature initially. We also have a pressure initial, and that is 2.14 bar. And our last state variable initial is an amount of gas that, well, we don't know. What we do know is we have a sample of N2, and then we're asked what volume does the gas occupy so this tells us something very interesting about the number of moles. It's going to be constant during the process. We're doing this in a balloon or something, and nothing is leaking in or out. Now, from our general form of the equation, once we get there, we also could use our final pieces of information. Well, we're being asked, what is the final volume of the gas that we're trying to calculate? That happens at a final pressure of 1.02 bar and at a final temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius, which we're going to say is, oh, I was trying to do math in my head, never a good idea. Let's pull out my calculator. So 37.8 plus R273.15 temperature conversion is, uh, let's call it 311 or 310. No, 311.0 works for me, Kelvin. And our final number of moles, well, we've seen it's constant. So that equals our initial number of moles. This is good for us because now we can take our general form of the gas equation, which is PIVI over NITI equals PF. VF over NFTF. The first thing we're going to be able to do is let's just cancel out NI and NF. They're the same. They're a state variable we're not changing, so we don't have to worry about how some other state variable is going to respond because of that. So let's do some rearranging. We want a final volume. That's going to be somehow connected to the initial volume. related to the uh, initial pressure divided by the final pressure. So we're going to see how the squeezing or expanding is going to make its contribution to the volume change. Just need to wait for my iPad to update. It's not always the fastest technology. 
And here we're going to do our temperature as well, which is that we are going to have TF over TI here. Excuse me. And so now let's see what's on the go. We've got a pressure, uh, uh, an initial volume, sorry, of 0, 1.00 milliliters. There we go. We've got a pressure. It ends up at 1.02 bar after starting at 2.14 bar. And so what we see is the initial pressure was higher than the final pressure. We've relaxed the external pressure. We're not squeezing as much. That should come with a volume increase. We'll see exactly how much when we do our ratio calculation. But let's get our temperatures in there as well. We've got our final temperature of 311.0 Kelvin. And we're going to divide all this by our initial temperature of 309.3 Kelvin. And what we're going to see is this. We have 1.00 milliliters, our original volume, is going to increase in size due to the pressure change alone that's been made. And that increase is going to be a factor of 2.10. The volume is going to want to get 2.10 times bigger because of the pressure change alone. But we didn't have just the pressure change. We have a temperature change. So let's now see what that's going to do for us. 311.0 divided by 309.3. And what we see is this is actually 1.00, let's say, sub 5, or 1.005. Well, there actually wasn't that much of a temperature increase. So the volume isn't going to increase all that much because of the temperature part of what's going on. It's the pressure part. I take these three things, I multiply them together, my 1.005 times 2.10 and my original one milliliter, and I'm going to find my final volume is 2.11 milliliters. I've taken my two separate changes, used one equation, to figure out how that all worked. That's the power of the general form of the ideal gas law.